We're on to chapter 5 of the Bhagavad Gita. We have done uh, the first four chapters in, in four previous videos. Uh, this chapter is called Karma Sannyasa Yoga. Karma, again, means action. Uh, sannyasa is renunciation. And this whole chapter is talking about two ba basic um, paths you can go. You can, you can renounce action, and you can live in the world and renounce the fruit of your actions. Um, and we'll, we'll talk more about that as we go along, but let's just review real quickly um, the, the first four chapters. Um, the first chapter is setting the, the, the stage. It's bringing you to the battlefield where Krishna and Arjuna are in a chariot together. Uh, Krishna is driving the chariot and they drive to, out to the middle of the battlefield. Arjuna gets very upset uh, when he realizes the fight that is ahead of him. And the second chapter, and, and then he says to Krishna, I'm not going to fight, and, and, but I will listen to what you have to tell me, Krishna, what, what you have to counsel me, because you are my friend and counselor. And then in chapter two, Krishna begins his discourse, his uh, counsel to Arjuna, and it begins with, and, and, the, and chapter two is actually a summary of the whole Bhagavad Gita. And it's, if you only had one chapter to read, that would be the one to read. It has, it has just about everything that you, that you might need to know, but, but you really need to read the whole Bhagavad Gita. It's 18 chapters. But if you only had one, read chapter two. Um, Krishna says there, um, there, there's two things. There's Sankhya. And there's yoga. These are two philosophical traditions. It might be helpful to think of Sankhya as the theory and yoga as the practice, right? Rather than, um, I, used to, uh, I used to read it like Krishna says, Arjuna, you've heard about Sankhya, and now I'm going to tell you about yoga, as if like Sankhya is a thing of the past, you don't need Sankhya. No, but actually... Um, this whole, the, the whole entire Bhagavad Gita is all about yoga, but it's also, it's really yoga and Sankhya. Sankhya being the theory, yoga being the practice. Um, you need both, right? But, you, but a lot of people only have the theory and they don't have the practice. And, and that's really what it comes down to is the practice. So let's, um, let's get into this chapter. And, and, and Krishna has been talking about karma yoga, and he's also been talking about um, jnana yoga, which is the yoga of knowledge. And Sankhya, you could say, is, is in that realm of, of the yoga of knowledge, but um, it's, not that, it's not that easy either. Um, but let's go, let's, let's start reading. This, is, this chapter only has 29 verses, so it's, it's, it's quite a bit shorter. Arjuna uvacha sanyasam karmanam krishna punar yoga Yogam cha shansasi yach chreya etayor ekam tanme bruhi su nishchitam. Arjuna said, O oh Krishna, you praise renunciation of actions and also yoga. Please tell me conclusively which is better of the two. Okay, so, so there's two. Two things that you've been praising, Krishna. Um, the renunciation of actions, um, karma sannyasa. And also yoga, which is yoga being, according to to the definition, yoga karmasu kaushalam, meaning yoga, yoga is skill in action, meaning you give up attachment to the fruits of your action. That that's what that means. That's that was from chapter two. Yoga um, samatvam yoga uchate. Yoga is also said to be equanimity or evenness of mind. And, and that, is, that comes from skill and action through, through giving up the fruits of, one, of your actions and residing in a space of, um, we could say, holy indifference. We'll talk more about that. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Sanyasa Karma Yogascha Nishreyasa Karavu Bhau Tayostu Karma Sanyasat Karma Yogovish Vishishyate. The Blessed Lord said, Renunciation and the yoga of action both lead to the highest bliss. 
But of the two, the yoga of action is superior to the renunciation of action. So the yoga of action is superior. Karma yoga. Karma yoga. This is talking now about, uh, there's four paths that are outlined in the Bhagavad Gita. There's karma yoga, jnana yoga, raja yoga, and bhakti yoga. Um, karma yoga is the yoga of action. Bhakti yoga, the yoga of de devotion. Raja yoga, the yo yoga of meditation. And jnana yoga, the yoga of knowledge. Um, here, we're talking about karma yoga. And Krishna is saying, karma yoga is superior to, to the renunciation of action. It's going to explain why. So here we go. Verse 3. Gneyaha, gneyaha saknitya sanyasi yo na dveshti na kankshati mirdvandvo hi mahabaho sukam bandhat pramuchate. He should be known as a perpetual sanyasi who neither hates nor desires. A sanyasi is a renunciate. Um, for free from the pairs of opposites, O mighty armed Arjuna, he is easily freed from bondage. Okay, so, so this is all about freeing yourself from duality, the pairs of opposites, freeing yourself from um, the likes and dislikes, like I like this, I don't like that, freeing yourself from attachment and aversion, from from all the dualities, hot and cold, pain and pleasure, even the, even the moral dualities, good and bad, right and wrong, ultimately. Four, verse four. Sankhya yogao pritag balaha paravadanti na panditaha ekamapyastitaha Samyag ubayor vindate palam. Children, not the wise, speak of knowledge and the yoga of action, or the performance of action, as though they are distinct and different. He who is truly established in one obtains the fruits of both. So, um, um, both, both ultimately, you get both when you are. Um, if you if you do one, you get the fruits of both, and and the Bhagavad Gita is really talking about the um, is really talking about how all these paths really intersect. The four paths that I mentioned: Raja, Bhakti, Karma, Jnana. They're they're not really completely distinct. They they all really interlay and they and they and they all integrate as well, um, and. and but you may be more on one path than another, but ultimately they really all intersect. Yat sankhye prapyate stanam tad yoger api gamyate ekam sankhyam cha yogam cha yaha pashyati sa pashyati. That place which is reached by the sankhyas or the gyanis is also reached by the yogis, the karma yogis. He who sees knowledge in the performance of action, karma yoga as one, sees truly. So this is a restatement. This is saying um, the jnanis, the, the, the ones that, pr that, that uh, practice jnana yoga, the yoga of knowledge, they reach the same place as the karma yogis, or the karma yogis reach the same place as the jnanis. A karmi is a, a one who practices karma yoga. A jnani is one who practices jnana yoga. They both get to the same place. Let's not be confused about this. They, you know, it's not like they're going different places. They're, they're going to the same place in the end. All, path, all paths lead you home. Sanyasas tu maha baho dukam aptum ayogataha yoga yukto munir brahma na chirena digachati. But O oh, mighty armed Arjuna, renunciation is hard to attain without yoga. The sage who is in, is in harmony with yoga quickly goes to Brahman. Okay, this is, it's hard to renounce without yoga. 
So you want to be in harmony with yoga and you will go to Brahman. Brahman is the name for the absolute reality, the, the, the one true reality beyond, beyond all names, forms, concepts. Sometimes, you know, Krishna says, you will come to me. Sometimes he says, go to Brahman. It's the same thing, ultimately. Verse 7. Yoga yukto vishuddhatma vijitatma jitendriya sarva bhutatma bhutatma kurvan api na lipyate. He who is devoted to the path of action, whose mind is pure, who has conquered the self, who has subdued his senses, and who realizes his self as the self in all beings, though acting, is not tainted. So again, you know, this has been said before. And let me, let me just say that, that Krishna repeats himself a lot. There's a lot of repetition in the Bhagavad Gita. And, and you know, you could ask why. Why is it? Why, why is there so much repetition? Um, it's a great way to learn. You know, you, you, you need to hear things. We, we do need to hear things more than once generally, especially important ideas. You know, we, we need to hear uh, again and again in different ways. So, um, one whose mind is pure has conquered the self, who has su subdued his senses, and who realizes his self as the self in all beings, though acting is not tainted, is not tainted by action. So, this is another way of saying that um, goes beyond karma. This person goes beyond karma, goes beyond action. They do not, they are not affected by karma anymore. Naiva kinchit karomiti yukto manyeta tatva vit pashyan shrinivan sprish an jigrahan ashnan gachan Svapan Shvasan Pralapan Visrijan Grinan Unmishan Nimishan Api Indriyani Indriyar Teshu Vartanta Iti Dharayan. That was a mouthful. This is a, this is actually written in different different verse form here. I do nothing at all. Thus would the harmonized knower of truth think. Seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, eating, going, sleeping, and breathing. So, in other words, the harmonized, the one that established in yoga, whether um, that person is a jnani or a karma yogi, um, re realizes whatever in whatever they're doing that they're not the doer, right? I do nothing at all. I'm not. I'm not doing anything here, which is a a mind-bending idea. <laughs> Maybe that's why it needs to be repeated again and again because this is so hard to um, to believe. Actually, pralapan vis because we're so we're so um, conditioned to think we are the doer, that we are the actor, that um, we we have autonomy, complete autonomy. Pralapan vis visrajan grhnan. Un mishan nimishan api indriyani indrish yarteshu vartanta iti dharayan. Speaking, letting go, seizing, opening, and closing the eyes, one should be convinced that the senses move among the sense objects. In other words, the same, same idea that, that um, whatever you do, you become convinced, or you should become convinced, that. Um, it's just the senses that are that are sensing sense objects, but it's not the true reality. It's an appearance. Brahman yadhya karmani sangam tyaktva karuti yaha lipyate nasa papena padma patram ivam basa. He who does actions, offering them to Brahman and abandoning, abandoning attachment, is not tainted by sin, just as a lotus leaf is not tainted by water. So you offer 
everything, let's say Brahman is God, you know, a way to put it in English terms, in English language is you offer everything up to God um, and you, you let go of attachment. And one great way of putting that is you do your best and you give God the rest, right? You, do, you just do your best, everything you do, um, you offer everything to God and you let go of, you let go of attachment to the results you let go of the results. You let go of any expectation. You let go of any selfish, selfish attachment to whatever you do. Verse 11. Kayena manasa buddhya kevaler indriyer api yoginaha karma kurvanti sangam tyaktvatma shudhaye. Yogis having abandoned attachment perform actions only through the body, mind, intellect, and even the senses for the purification of the self. Okay, so everything becomes, when you get on this path of karma yoga, everything becomes um, a, a rite of purification. Everything you do is, is, a, is, a, is an offering. Everything you do is a sacrifice, so to speak, is an offering to the divine within, and um, another way of putting that is the purification of the self. Everything is bringing you closer. Everything you do is bringing you closer to the understanding or the knowledge of your true reality. Yuktaha karma palam tyaktva shantim apnoti naishtikim ayukta kama karina pale sakto Nibadyate. The one who is united, the well-poised or harmonized, having abandoned the fruit of action, attains eternal peace. Whereas the one who is not united, the unsteady or unbalanced, impelled by desire and attached to the fruit, is bound. So you let go, the one who is united, the yogi, is um, attains to eternal peace through abandoning any selfish attachment, any selfish self-interest in anything. Um, whereas the, the one that who does not do that um, is still bound to karma, is still bound to the world. Um, they have not freed themselves. And the word that's going to be used here is moksha. Sometimes you hear the word kevala, kevalam, Sometimes it's moksha. 13. Sarva karmani manasa sanyas yaste sukam vashi navadvare pure dehi naiva kurvan na karayan. Mentally renouncing all actions and being self controlled, the embodied one happily rests in the nine gate city, which is the body that has nine gates the eyes, the uh, nostrils the mouth, the ears, um, that's seven, the anus and the, um, and the sexual organ, that's nine. The nine gates of the body, um, mentally renouncing all actions. So the, again, this is talking about mental renunciation. It's not talking about physically renounce, renouncing ad, actions, um, it's all it, Krishna has already established. Everyone has to act. You know, everyone in this world is acting. Um, we all are impelled by by the gunas, by by the qualities of nature, to act in, in one way or another. Um, it's and so the karma karma yoga really is a mental renunciation where you where you mentally within your mind you you let go of attachment. You let go of selfish desire. And then you then you can live happily in your body. <clears throat> True happiness we're talking about. Na kartritvam na karmani lokasya srijati prabhu na karma pala sanyogam Svabhavas tu pravartate. 
Neither does the Lord create agency nor actions for the world, nor union with the fruits of action, of actions. Rather, it is nature that acts. Again, the gunas is nature. Um, one's nature, svabhava. Um, this is a tough, tough one. We'd have to look into this this particular shloka or verse. Um, but basically, it's saying um, everything is 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 being enacted, so to speak, by the by the qualities of nature. Um, the Lord is beyond everything. You know, the the Brahman is is beyond beyond the beyond, right? And it's not even Krishna, <laughs> who is a Saguna Brahman, a God with form. He's not acting. Not the creator of these things. But again, we'd have to talk more about that. That that's a tough one to 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 talk about, and I'm not. I don't know if I'm qualified. Not that they kasyachit papam na chayva sukritam vibuhu agnane agnanenavritam gnanam tena muyanti jantavaha. The Lord takes neither the demerit nor the merit of any. Knowledge is enveloped by ignorance and beings are deluded. Um, I think this is a way of saying, this is connected to the last verse, um, that um, things are, we are deluded um, by ignorance of our true self. And that, and our delusion is in the way of, of our knowledge of our true self. It, it, and and the, what is ignorance? What is avidya? Um, is that the word that's used here? Agnanena is, is ignorance. By ignorance, agnanena is, is, is used for ignorance. But whether it's ag, agnana or avidya, um, it comes down to the same thing, which is we think that we are our body, our personality, our ego. Um, it seems very convincing. And that is ignorance. And, and that's why we are deluded. Um, that's, that's not God's doing, though. That's, that, is, um, that is something that we need to undo to know what we truly are, to, to, to realize who we truly are. Verse 16, Gnanena tu tad agnanam yesham nashitam atmanaha tesham aditya vaj gnanam Prakash, prakashayati tatparam. But to those whose ignorance is destroyed by knowledge of the self, like the sun, knowledge reveals the supreme Brahma. <clears throat> okay, so so as you do this this inner renunciation, this mental renunciation, um, the, your ignorance becomes destroyed, right? Your your ignorance is um, dissolved. Um, and what reveals itself is, is your supreme self or the supreme Brahman. In this case, um, what is the word? Tat, tat param, um, tat param, that, that, that supreme, that, <laughs> that supreme thing. Tat is that. And tat is, is going to be used a lot here, um, in a moment. Tat is another name for Brahman. Tat is like saying, we can't say what th that is, right? We, it's that. We, we, we really can't even put a name to it. So we call it that. Verse 17. Tad budayas, tad atmanas, tanishtas, tat parayanaha, gachan. Tian punar avritim gyana nirduta kalmasha. Their intellect absorbed in that, their being, their self being that, established in that, with that as their supreme goal, they go whence there is no return, their sins dispelled by knowledge. So again, knowledge, right? Gyana, gnosis. By 
by engaging in this practice of mental renunciation, of um, karma sannyas, you, um, the yogi, um, goes to that, that supreme goal. They go there. They go there. But it's really, um, it's not like they go anywhere. Actually, <laughs> let, me, let me correct that. It's more that it's like you're you're. You're clearing the clouds, right? The clouds of, of selfishness, you could say, of the clouds of delusion are in the way of the sun. You clear the, the clouds and, and the sun has not gone anywhere and you have not gone anywhere. It's the clouds have been removed and now you see the light. You know, the sun is shining. And so you, you, re, you reach a, the place of true knowledge, jnana, symbolized by the sun. 18. Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmane Gavi Hastini Shuni Chaiva Shva Pake Cha Panditaha Sama Darshinaha. Sages look with an equal eye on a Brahmana endowed with learning and humility, on a cow, an elephant, a dog, and even an outcast. Sama Darshina, equal vision. Um, so, a Brahma, um, so someone who is in this, is, is in that place of Samadvam, of, or, or Sama Darshina, they have attained, Sama is actually, actually the word, the same as our word, is cognate with our word same, Sama, same. So you see things equally, you see same or equal, you see everything as one. You don't make distinctions. You don't look at this, this person is above this, that's that person. You don't, you look at an outcast, meaning the lowest cast, uh, lo, be below the cast, actually. An outcast is, is someone who is the lowest of the low in society. Um, you, you would see that person as equally a child of God. No, no more, no less than anyone else, right? And, and you don't make those kinds of distinctions. Those are human-made distinctions. This is a very powerful verse. Remember that Gandhi um, loved the Bhagavad Gita. His, that, that, that was his, his refuge, the Bhagavad Gita. And he also tried to reform the caste system, especially the idea that, that some people were outcasts. He thought that was horrible. And um, he tried, tried to say that that Let's, let's rename the untouchables um, children of God, Harijan, children of God. And he, 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 he did his best to reform that, that notion, which still stands to this day of the outcast. Um, 19. Ihaiva ter jitaha sargo yesham samye stitam manaha nirdosham hi samam Brahma tasmad brahmani te stitaha. Even here in this world, those whose minds rest in reality overcome birth. Brahman is indeed spotless and real, therefore they are established in Brahman. This is an imp important verse because this, this is not saying this is a pie in the sky type of thing. Like you're going to be liberated when you die, right? You, um, actually, it did say something like that earlier, but but what it's really getting at is you free yourself even when you're in your body, right? You 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 will attain true happiness even in your body, in, living in your body. You will be you will be in the place of love, peace, joy, um, and all the good things that go with with knowing your true self. You're being, you know, t today we talk about being our authentic self. This is really getting at the same thing, except it's not, um, this is beyond the world and beyond the body, right? Um, a lot of times we, we use these kinds of concepts, but we're, we're, we're still getting at a very worldly thing. Whereas this is taking us beyond the world entirely. But it's saying that the impact we will feel the impact even in this world, right? Even in the, even here. Na prarishyet priyam prapya 
nod vijet prapya chapriyam stirabudir asamudo brahmavid brahmani stitaha. Resting in Brahman with a steady intellect and undiluted, the knower of Brahman neither rejoices upon obtaining what is pleasant nor grieves upon obtaining what is unpleasant. So this is um, how you recognize, you know, what who is established in the state, or how you recognize when you are in that state. Um, you will you will not rejoice at at, at, at pleasurable things, and you will not um, grieve upon things that are considered to be bad or or in unfortunate things. You will be in in that place again of holy indifference. You will be, you will you will reside in your quiet center, in your quiet knowing, and you will not be disturbed. One way or or another, everything is just enough. Baya sparshesh vasaktatma. Vindatyatmani yat sukam sabrama yoga yuktatma sukam akshayam ashnute. With the self unattached to external contacts, he finds happiness in the self. With the self engaged in the meditation of Brahman, he attains endless happiness. So, in other words, um, the the yogi, the true yogi, attained attains to this place of self-reliance. This is Emerson. Ralph Waldo Emerson had a famous essay called Self-Reliance. Self-reliance means you are not... And, and Emerson was a student of, of the Bhagavad Gita, too. He actually wrote a, a, a really cool poem called Brahma, and you can check it out, um, where he... It's basically... Uh, Brahma's based on the Bhagavad Gita. Um, so... Self-reliance means that the yogi is, it, it finds the self within, meditates on the self within, and, and, and finds the happiness in that, and not from external, anything external. Nothing external can, can, can bring the happiness that that connection with one's true self does. That's where we all go wrong, is we think that things outside of ourselves are going to make us happy or they make us happy or sad, and that is not the truth. 22. Yehi sansparsha ja boga duka yonaya eva te adyan tavantaha kaunteya na teshu ramate buddha. The enjoyments that arise from contact are only sources of pain. For they have a beginning and an end, O Arjuna. The wise do not rejoice in them. So anything enjoyable in this world um, really is not it. Anything external that we derive enjoyment from, it has a beginning and an end. How can anything with a beginning and an end be fully satisfying? It can't. That's the point. You know, it's impermanent. It cannot fully satisfy. And so a wise person doesn't re rejoice in, in those kinds of pleasures. Those are fleeting pleasures, right? The wise person wants the thing that doesn't change, that never changes. And that is the knowledge of one's true self, the true reality. And if you like, you know, you, you, obviously Krishna is not talking about love yet. Uh, I think that will come later. But um, if you like the idea of love, you know, you, you, you rest in love. You, you, are, you, are, um, you are lost in love. Shak noti haiva ya sodum prak sharira vimokshanat kama krodo bavam vegam sayuktaha sasuki naraha. He who is able, while still here in this world, to withstand the impulse born out of desire, um, kama is desire, kroda is anger. So born out of desire and anger, before the liberation from the body, he is a yogi and he is a happy man or woman. Right? 
man or woman, he who is able while still here, she who is able while still here in this world to withstand the impulse born out of desire and anger before the liberation from the body. She is a yogi, yogini, and she is a happy uh, person, happy woman. Um, you would, you, you basically overcome kama and krodha, anger and desire. These are big ones. Um, you don't know if you've, if you've done that until you get tested, right? When you when you're tested, then you really know if you if you've overcome it, uh, and that that's that's the um, the litmus test. You know, can you can you not get angry at, at the thing that makes you the angriest, right? The person that that riles you up so much that you have to kick and scream or yell or, 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 or just say or do something that you, that you later um, feel sorry about or regret. 24. Yon taha suko mtar aramas tatantar jyotir eva yahasa yogi brahma nirvanam brahma buto digachati. He was happy within, who re who rejoices within, and who is illuminated within. That yogi attains absolute freedom or moksha, becoming Brahman himself. So absolute freedom again is moksha, right? Liberation. Um, so that yogi who has attained to this place of of finding the self within, finding true happiness within, and the light within. That person not only goes to Brahman, but becomes Brahman, right? One with God. I and my father are one, as Jesus said in, in John, right? I and my father are one, and you too can share eternal life with me, and I'm going to show you how. And that's what Krishna is doing here with Arjuna. He's saying, listen, listen, friend, I'm going to tell you how, to, how you can realize your essential oneness with, with God. Here we go. 25. Labante Brahma Nirvanam Rishayaha Kshina Kalmashaha Chichina Dvaidha Yatatmanaha Sarvabhuta Hite Rataha. The sages obtain absolute freedom or moksha when their sins have been destroyed, their dualities have been torn asunder. They are self-controlled and they are intent on the welfare of all beings. Intent on the welfare of all beings. Sarva Bhuta. Sarva Bhuta. Um, a rishi is a sage. Brahma Nirvana. Liberation from... Liberation. Freedom. Moksha. So... Um, these are, these are what you need to do to attain a moksha. Your sins are destroyed. You've gone, the, the dualities have been torn asunder. They are intent on the welfare of all beings. They're self-controlled. Uh, it's a repetition, you know. We're getting towards the end of the chapter. This, again, this is repetitive, but, um, it's, it's, it bears repeating, <laughs> Kama kroda viyuktanam yatinam yata chetasam abhito brahma nirvanam vartate vidit atmanam. Absolute freedom exists on all sides for those self controlled ascetics. Um, what is the word for ascetic here? Who are free from desire and anger, who have controlled their thoughts, and who have realized the self. Um, kama and Krodha, desire and anger, again. Um, Self-realization, self Brahma Nirvana, right? They, they've, they've reached the state of Brahma Nirvana when they have gone beyond desire and anger. They've controlled their thoughts, right? Desire and anger, those are big ones. <laughs> 
I mean, desire really leads to anger. When we have desires, when we have attachments, then we get angry at angry because we we don't get what we want and and if you look at it in life we never get what we want um i mean we might but we're not we're not satisfied even if we get what we want <laughs> 27 sparshan kritva bahir bayan chakshush chaivantare bruvo prana panau samau kritva nasa byantara Chaurinau, Yatendriya, Mano Budir, Munir Moksha, Parayanaha, Vigaticha, Baya Kroto, Ya Sada Mukta Evasa. Shutting out all external contacts and fixing the gaze between the eyebrows, realizing the outgoing and incoming breaths moving with moving within the nostrils. <clears throat> now this is getting into um more of like yoga as we think of yoga right in in terms of like meditation and withdrawing your senses like the eight limbs in that are in in patanjali obviously patanjali was drawing upon the bhagavad gita that's one of the key texts that whoever wrote patanjali's yoga sutras was was definitely drawing upon the bhagavad gita obviously um and uh now this this is seems to be talking about the path of meditation, Raja Yoga, right? And that will be talked about later, you know. But this is one thing that yogis do. They 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 meditate, they they go within themselves and they and they fix their gaze at their eyebrows. Um and they and they connect with their breath. Yatendriya mano budir munir moksha parayanaha vigatecha bhaya krodo ya sada mukta evasaha. With the senses, mind, and intellect ever controlled, having liberation as their supreme goal, free from desire, fear, and anger, the sage is truly liberated forever. Seems to be repeating, right? Maybe there's something new. Um, Maybe the new thing here is that it's talking now also about this practice of going within yourself as well. Um, maybe in conjunction with karma sannyas, meaning the yoga, the renunciation of action, but you also do these practices, um, and you you realize the self within yourself. Twenty-nine. Boktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshvaram suhridam sarva bhutanam gnatva mam shantim richati. He who knows me as the enjoyer of sacrifices and austerities, the great lord of all the worlds, and the friend of all beings, attains peace. He who knows me, Krishna, right, mam. Me, Lord Krishna, who knows me as the enjoyer of sacrifices and austerities, the great Lord of all the worlds and the friend of all beings attend, uh, attains peace. So that's how the chapter ends with that. Um, so you get to, you get to peace. Now he's not talking about Brahman. All of a sudden he switches to himself. He's not different than Brahman though. You know, I think that's what we need to talk about and what we need to bring bring to the fore here is that the Krishna is is Brahman, but Brahman in form. Brahman that you that Arjuna obviously can relate to because he because Brahman is a very abstract concept. Whereas Krishna is not abstract. Krishna is in a body at this point and he's relaying this teaching as a way, you know, to to say this is how you can get back to your true self. Um, and I, at this moment, I represent your true self, right? I, Krishna is the representation. He's the perfect man. He is the perfect being in a body. And he's telling us how, how to get, get there ourselves. Uh, and that is a true friend. He, <laughs> he's a friend of all beings because he's, because he's, he's sharing all that he knows with us. 
Anyway, I hope this has been helpful, and we're going to go on to chapter 6 next. And please always feel free to leave a comment if, you, if you'd like. Um, I would love to hear any feedback you have. Um, I also am putting um, our Patreon page if, if you want to make any kind of contribution. This is a course, I even though I'm just reading the Bhagavad Gita, but, but if you want to go a little deeper, um, reach out to me and we can, we can work that out. I will also start putting my email if anyone wants to um, get in contact. And uh, I'm going to be working on a book this year on uh, a translation of the Bhagavad Gita and connecting it to uh, Christ consciousness. So stay tuned for more of that. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.